Hello friends, welcome to Dr. Sai Physiology Academy, Dopa for short. This is the place where we make the learning of physiology easy, exciting and effective. Thank you for joining me. And if you're new to this channel, you're especially welcome. And if you love the content that we share, kindly click the like button and also the subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on notifications so I don't get to miss any new content that will drop. Now let's get started. So today we are dealing with synaptic transmission. In case you don't know what a synapse is, a synapse is the junction between two nerves okay the junction between two nerves there are two different types of synapses okay as you can see here electrical synapse and chemical synapse but the usual synapse the one that is most abundant in the body is the chemical synapse because nerves, they don't just, you know, nerves originate from the central nervous system. Do you understand? All nerves. In fact, the brain itself is a mass of nervous tissue. Do you understand? So they originate from the central nervous system, brain and spinal cord. Okay, that's where they originate. But for them to reach their destination, that whole journey, they are there's a lot of interconnections between them. It helps in the coordination of different kinds of responses and integrating the stimulus or the stimuli, as the case may be, that is coming into it. So different, one nerve can have, okay, can be receiving stimulus and impulses from several hundreds of other nerves. And one nerve also can be giving out impulses to one singular nerve so it's it's very interesting that's the way the nervous system operates okay so this one is not so common electrical synapse and what is the difference now look at this thing here this is a nerve the giving cell let's put it the giving cell this is the receiving the receiving cell which could be another nerve or it could be a muscle okay so look at what happens in this one there is a direct connection for flow of electrical impulses from this giving cell to the next one to the receiving cell this structure here is known as gap junction you see that gap junction for electrical synapse that connects the two together okay but in the chemical synapse there is no physical connection between them there is a space here you understand and that's why this one is faster this one is a little slower there's what they call a synaptic delay for a chemical synapse because a lot of things will happen i'm going to talk about the mechanism of transfer okay from nerve to nerve a nerve has an action potential flowing like this this is the axon terminal okay the axon terminal it needs to transfer that action potential to another cell how does it happen that's what we're going to be looking at okay so here you have what is known as synaptic cleft The synaptic cleft the space in between them then these things here the normal ion ion channels all right what is the major difference between between them a good place where you have electrical synapses in the heart okay the heart muscle cardiac muscle and all of that this electrical synapse to make it very fast all right but this is more common so all these things here what are they they are called synaptic vesicles okay synaptic synaptic vesicles what do they contain they contain what is known as a what a neurotransmitter so all these red dots here called neuro neuro transmitter okay neuro 
neuron transmitter so it's the agent that will transfer the action potential or electrical impulse from one nerve to the other nerve and if it's a muscle to the muscle do you understand that's why it's called a neurotransmitter there are different types of neuro neurotransmitters they are chemical substances okay chemical substances one of the most very commonly known neurotransmitters is called acetylcholine have you heard of it before acetyl Okay, very common in a lot of nerves. So that's it. So the synaptic vesicles, they are vesicles that contain a lot of acetyl. Let's use in the case of this example, for this example, acetylcholine loaded into this, in this synaptic vesicle. Okay, so the next thing we're going to be doing is how, how does action potential, because its action potential is carrying an impulse, a message, wire, electrical current. How is it transferred from this cell and to enter the next neuron and it will become an action potential in the next neuron that will now transfer it and when it gets to another nerve, it will also transfer the same action potential. When there is a space, there is no physical connection between them. Unlike this one, just direct, very easy. How? How does this transfer the action potential? So we're going to be looking at that mechanism. Don't go anywhere after this break. All right, you're welcome back. Now, we want to talk about the mechanism of synaptic transmission it's very easy extremely easy but you need to understand it you need to pay attention let's go into it now there is do you remember how action potential is, was generated in the first place cast your mind back the memory potential you know what we said we said ionic basis for action potential Okay, sodium came into the cell when there was an impulse. It so voltage gated sodium channels opened, sodium rushed in, and it made the cell depolarize more positive, and so on. So, that depolarization is the action, it reached threshold, and there was a shoot, okay, positive feedback that changed the whole potential which was now an action potential that was propagated so everything is the flow of chemicals the flow of ions the whole body everything about the body is about chemicals so when we talk about two types of of communication electrical and chemical means of communication through hormones and all of that is still almost the same thing. The only difference is that the body uses electrical this thing through nerves just to make it faster. But at this junction where the nerve would transfer it to another nerve is still chemical means. Or if it's a muscle with effectors or a gland, it is to still use chemicals to interact with receptors in the other cell, the receiving cell. Do you understand? Everything chemicals. Now look at look at what happens. An action potential now is flowing like this from the axon. This is the axon. Okay? And this is the synaptic axon terminal. Okay? Or synaptic terminal. What happens is that there are voltage-gated calcium channels. Let's write it here. That has numerous at this axon terminal. So when there is flow of electricity, voltage, they are activated. And what happens? They open up. They open because of that electricity. And when they open, calcium from the extracellular fluid now rush in 
it's a calcium channel so only calcium rushes in and fills this terminal so calcium now what does it do it interacts with certain protein those are proteins that help to make this synaptic vesicle to now fuse and attach to the membrane here you see these synaptic vesicles they will now come and fuse and a process of exocytosis which you already know about from general physiology okay exocytosis it will fuse here and now pour out its content which is neurotransmitters the neurotransmitter to pour it out into this place and those molecules of the neurotransmitter will now go to the next cell and bind to the channels there are, are receptors there okay so in this case you have acetylcholine receptors when a chemical substance binds to them they are activated it will now lead to changes in this particular cell that will lead to the opening of sodium channels are you seeing the relationship again sodium so this will now lead to the opening of sodium channels so sodium will now rush into this other cell and now cause a depolarization are you getting it very straightforward very very straightforward the binding of this neurotransmitter to this cell will cause this sodium channels in the receiving cell to open and sodium will rush in as sodium is rushing in it is causing a depolarization of this receiving cell that depolarization leads to action potential so this one now carries its own action potential and the process continues extremely rapid very rapid okay so that is how it happens so mechanism of synaptic transmission transmission of electrical impulse from one neuron to another neuron or from one neuron to a muscle do you understand that so the next thing you ask yourself there is now the neurotransmitter has been released will it remain there because if it remains there it will continue to generate electrical impulses which you don't want once it does its work the transmission should stop so there is a process of clearing this place of the neurotransmitter and it happens through several means let's mention some of them okay so one of them is called reoptic reoptic that means the neurotransmitter is taken back recycled back and it enters back into this given cell and it's now repackaged in synaptic vesicles for another use okay those what that's one of the ways in which the body handles that then another way number two is true enzymatic enzyme enzymatic destruction okay so there are enzymes that will destroy these neurotransmitters for example in the case of acetylcholine hmm, there's what is called cholinesterase it's an enzyme that breaks down acetylcholine to break it down into acetate and choline cholinesterase to destroy it so it doesn't remain there and continues to activate so that's uh they understand that okay so there's another means by which they can be destroyed they can be cleared away from this place so number three it's called engulfment engulfment okay so what happens is that macrophages come and engulf through phagocytosis or pinocytosis in the case pinocytosis they engulf and eat up the neurotransmitters and it clears away from that place do you understand that so the next thing now is diffusion sometimes this 
Jesus Christ will just diffuse and just get lost in the surroundings. Okay, so another, the last one, diffusion. Okay, so these are the four major ways in which a neurotransmitter is cleared from the synaptic cleft so that it doesn't continue to excite or activate the receiving cell. So do you understand this now? Synaptic transmission. So there are different types of neurotransmitters. They are all there in the books. Okay, acetylcholine is just used as one example. Okay, there are different classes of neurotransmitters. You can read it up. So this is basically what you need to know. Basic stuff about synaptic transmission. Right, so I'm going to see you in the next video.